Gary yeah, needs sorry, some. Sorry. I've still got a trial going on, but oh, get rid of that. On. Been watching the Alex James. Is that Alex James? Uh, Alex Jones. That shows how Jones. much we're interested in. Not interested at all. Not Anything interested in politics. Don't Doesn't care. Have, I've told him all, all his views. They're mine. <laughs> So Gary needs some earphone suggestions, guys, because his setup is appalling. Oh, <laughs> I'm looking at him in the dark. Look at them. They're saying they look good. No, He's no. got some knotted earphones right now. These came with my Samsung S2. That's <laughs> years ago. I guess it links into what we're going to do because they do talk about, and actually it's got one of my favourite quotes that I always forget. I love it. Like I actually smiled and laughed a little this show has more of my like phrases that i use in day-to-day life than any no, other i was gonna yeah. make the point that this is the most quotes it's not like you can't some of the funniest ones you just can't fit in but for some yeah. reason it's got three that you can just adapt a little bit for any situation works. And it's, I'm, yeah, I'm stealing it. This seems like a good time to mention that we are the D-Trout Spinners and I am Mars Pennell. This little monkey fella is Gary Forrestal and he really does look like a little chimp at the moment. Sort of <laughs> night, night sort of You'd make a fantastic horror movie character, I think. Hair. <laughs> hair, There's nowhere that isn't hair that I can see. It's, I know. Well, clearly uh, your testosterone is testosterone. absolutely charging up because I'm running on half, mate. Ooh, that's the <laughs> funny one. Well, yeah, I mean that was. You know, you know, I didn't want to bring it out myself because. Yeah. Um, do you know? Do you know the funniest? Not the funniest still thing. Still got a when... moustache, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I do. Still got the moustache. Imagine if everything was just halved because you've got one ball. It's just like one half of moustache. <laughs> but um. So, so you've got I, two of most things. Yeah, you? I've got two of most. There's two ears, two lungs, two kidneys, two shoes. Are you still socks. the same person? Or? Still the same person, mate. It's a little bit more feminine. <laughs> I, I was, do you know, I when because it's like it's all that thing of like I want to joke in a good way, positive, but you don't. You Let's know, have a joke part. with podcasters with at work. So yeah, I was really worried about when when he whacked it off the doctor and they don't use like a carving knife so to speak they they do a risk assessment at the start do you want to explain what it because people might oh yeah sorry um so i i had testicular cancer still have to do some chemotherapy or whatever and loads of people sent in some lovely messages saying uh uh, glad you're feeling better and they also said hope gary is too so there you go so i was afterwards you were after no, I'm yeah, joking. I was <laughs> anyway, so I had to have uh, the little fella removed and uh don't know what they do with it. Oh. I'd love to be curious to know what they do with body parts that people don't use anymore. Ping pong. Like, <laughs> chuck it in the Albert Hall in a little egg cup next to Hitler's. I want to kind of research on that, but yeah. would you need to give your consent? Because it's... I did. I, I tell, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you something I did have to do prior to it having to to be removed i had to go to a fertility clinic have you ever been to one of them no no yeah (laughs) this is worse for me to hear than that (laughs) i know but you've managed so yeah i had to go there to uh basically wank into a jar Uh, (laughs) in a sterile room with no windows i don't even know if it was sterile it's it's the most unerotic atmosphere when you walk in and there's some sort of slippery chairs and um the first time i went in there you're like oh what how do i sit (laughs) Do I lay down? I it's not a bed. And uh, so I washed my hands before <laughs> then you did your business. And it was only on the second time I went in, I noticed that there was a television in there. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. You don't normally see televisions in hospitals. Yeah. What, turned it on and oh. you can hear like the whirling of a DVD. And I haven't heard that sound since like <laughs> early noughties because <laughs> everyone streams now. And it loaded up and it was like three patients in a hospital. Oh, what they and it was, gave you one where it was patience. And yeah, it was themed. Stopped, so it, it was a pornographic uh, DVD from probably about that about that time, early noughties. Really low quality. Really low quality. Um, Shot in the eighties or nineties. No, no, no. Brand. I wouldn't say nineties. I'd say noughties. But it was just like three women rolling yeah. around, just having a bit of fun. I did wonder what they whether yeah. they gave because it's like. In every other situation, any profession, even in the health service, that would be totally inappropriate. <laughs> but they, for this, it's like, I mean, you didn't need it then, you're saying, I assume. Or I found that. my imagination in that example a bit more erotic than what they were offering. It's Jeremy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was Jeremy. It was. No, that's, I'm proud of you most for that. 
I'm proud of you for it, you know. Yeah, well, thanks very I'm much. For, ma- for, for masturbating into, into a job. <laughs> I just, I don't know. But you, you won't need that. But it's just no. in case. But they, they said it was good. They said it was good quality material. So pleased about that. They said it was good. <laughs> they didn't say it like that. They, what did they say? <laughs> they said you've got eighteen. They've got. They you've got eighteen successful stems. Congratulations. <laughs> it didn't say it like that. Right, okay, so but okay. anyway, no. When, when they talked about having less testosterone, do you know what was going through my head? Have you watched Fight Club? Yeah, I have. Meatloaf oh, yeah, yeah. plays a character oh, called Meatloaf. Bitch Tits, and yeah. I was just thinking, I'm going to be Meatloaf and Bitch t- Bitch Tits. That's who I'm going to be. I've got that money. And then oh, I'm going to oh, turn okay. into a, a some some kind of radical terrorist and blow up a bank. I thought that was that was my future. Like Brad Pitt and shag his wife. <laughs> I have a split personality disorder. Well, I remember that, right? That does happen. Yeah, no, no, that's right. Yes, that's one of the famous spoilers of all time. I think if anyone out of us two is going to have a split personality disorder, it's you. Um, definitely. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's the funniest way I could um, react to that. All right, yeah, well, give me a break. From... But I don't think, yeah, you, if you have something removed, you, it actually does that. I think it was oh, no. narrative in entertainment. <laughs> but I would blow up the bank. <laughs> my, my well, especially, especially after inflation, Gary. Well, oh, inflation. My, my stomach. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing that off air. I know. Well, we're actually back to our reviews, ladies and gentlemen. Before we had our little health break, please say we're now halfway through Series 4. So this week we discuss Business as Usual, Series 4, Episode 3, originally broadcast on 11th of June 2005. Ricky takes Carl on a day out to a golf course. Ricky intercepts foolproof cooking instructions from Carl's girlfriend and Carl reminisces about the day he tried to put sausages in a toaster. I'll put a link to the show in the description and then when you're ready you can come and join us for a little debrief which is sort of round about now. I always do. Oh hi hi. Oh. Welcome back. Hello. So what are your initial thoughts? Yeah it's better than the previous two. I don't know if you found that sort of generally i agree it, i think it's saved by like there's there's periods of boring chat but it's much more i mean the, it's got classics in it the golf trip is clearly you know everyone loves the golf trip and it's kind of it's really well done and i think they planned that they said it but they didn't plan how they would do it you can just tell it's weird with the music it i don't know why i don't even know if that was a mod a song then honest mistake bravery it oh, was yeah. like it's kind of it didn't it places it i don't know about music but it just sounds more modern it does especially when you hear um the killers somebody told me that i remember where i was when i heard that song that, like, that, that was a that was a big song of my childhood that and oh, like, obviously mr brightside that was an anthem back in the day oh, i've been clubbing at mr brightside yeah in a yeah club. When they play was... house or disco, I just, I'm not interested. They put Mr. <laughs> so what about the golf trip? Tell me about the golf trip. Well, I know, but it's, I felt sort of Steve was not having a good show, but not because he was doing badly, but it just wasn't like he wasn't involved. And then I'd forgotten he contributes loads. Where he's genuinely angry at Ricky for reasons that are cor- yeah. totally correct. Um, <laughs> Ricky admits, but... It's, I like that. I kind of like that rant from Steve, even the parts that aren't funny. But Rick is kind of ranting. He, Carl's holiday, he's obsessed with it. Like, I know it's a joke, but and he knows he's doing stuff to be funny. But don't you think, like, he's so much, he gen, he's annoyed. And he's like a millionaire and sort of can take any time. I just, I just think it's like maybe a slight link to modern Ricky. A golf trip, a golf trip is... There's a really good combination between Ricky and Carl telling the story, and they both sort of chip in at the right place. They yeah, have yeah, a yeah. It. It's funny. Like, I've got quotes from, you know, them being in a golf buggy. I do wonder, I, I don't know, I never even noticed this, but he says, Well, you were in a buggy with me, Steve. Like, but when? Like, why is Ricky even in a golf buggy? Like, I t- he just doesn't seem he's not interested in sports all right they went to he went with Carl but why would 
I can't believe him and Steve ever went to play golf. But they Is did other not? things together, don't they? That they talk about times where they went bowling. Can you imagine Steve playing golf? He's the clubs be able to see fun. over the sand dunes and everything. Uh, no, actually, I think it is a disability, as Steve says, when it's golf. <laughs> disability. It's just funny, you know, Ricky and Steve being in a golf bucky. Just yeah. Well, did you did you think that Steve felt jealous not being asked to go away? No, I think he's used to it by now. I think <laughs> he's been not invited to enough stuff. Uh, but I think so. He he. No, he didn't sound. Familiar. I do feel at this point he has become like uh, Carl is the Buzz Lightyear to Steve's Woody. It's like I don't want to play with you anymore. <laughs> he well, just wants to play with the, Carl. Buzz Lightyear and Woody. What? Well, because um, when when Buzz comes on the scene, Andy's like discards, throws away Woody for a bit. All right. Is this in everyone's got their favourite toys? Is it Toy Story. King was. He couldn't speak. In the what? No, so just, oh, just that one. Speech. Can you well, talk a bit louder? No, I can't. Well, you keep yeah, moving okay, around. No, I know, but I'm just. I'm I know, but I'm get you coming. I'm not, like, I know, but the okay, audio is right. all over the place. Okay, keep this in. I will. Right, actually, it is now quite a lot closer. Yeah, that's good. Is it on the right settings, by the way? You know how long we were doing this. <laughs> It's about thirty minutes. It wasn't my fault. Yeah, I I like it when they go when they go away. It's like kind of when a sitcom but does it well, sort of has an away day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. XFM in Spain. It's so funny in Stoke yeah. Pogers. I'd love to play a bit of golf. I used to go with my granddad. I used Did to you? I used to love it. Yeah, proper range. Well, we started, we, so we went on like a driving range, and then we started as I got more and more interested and bought my own clubs. And then we, we did the, um yeah, we did like a nine course, and then we did one that was an 18 hole one. And it did literally, because my granddad, uh, <laughs> he, he was like, he was shuffling along, he could barely walk at this point, and it took about, it. I mean, he's, Ricky says four hours, I think it took us about eight. <laughs> it was so long. Do you remember what you went round in, like your scores? Cause it, oh my god! I mean, I wouldn't have been that great, that good. I was quite young. I think I was about he was sixteen. Good. He was good. Yeah. He was. Uh, you can't. You need. He strength. was good in his in his heyday, but oh, yeah, like, no. uh, the strength. He just. It's just the power, you know, because it is quite. It's just a satisfying game, though, and it's got like the accuracy. You're working out things. It's strategic. It, it's quite methodical. Yes. It is it's, yes. if you're going to play a sport, that's the one I'd go with. But Come interesting on. when we spoke to. Laurie, Laurie Peters, do check that episode out, by the way. Carl's best friend. They they play oh, yeah. golf together, don't they? So it's clearly a passion of his that he still well, does. No, he they just sent a picture of a car turned over on a... In a oh, snap. yeah. But yeah, it's like everyone plays golf, sports people play golf. No interest. I so Ricky to... says... Um, Actually, but golf. I think we should do that next. We've done a spa. No, no. We'll do a golf we'll thing next. So C Ricky says he's going to go to sleep because Carl says one of the most stupid things that he's ever said, which I don't think that's the s stupidest thing he's ever said. No, because he knows, you know. They can be yeah, he knows exactly what he's saying. No, the giraffe. Is it a giraffe build a ladder? No, no, he's saying, wake no, up, no, you no, 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 no. It's funny. It is funny because it's... So, I don't know what he's read, but... The thing that I took from that is, um, you know, when he says, no, nah, I'm going to go to bed, Carl, because I might as well, you know, I might as well be talking to a pot plant. Yeah. I've used that phrase oh. so many times in my life. That and from also... This or before you heard it? From, no, oh, oh as, yeah. No, I, mean, I, I, don't, I ain't got the imagination to come up with it. So I say that all the time. I also say, you know, when it's uh, when they're talking about you two, it goes old oh, nobbo. Oh, yeah, yeah Miles does that all the time. He loves that one. He I've got a, there's a guy at work, and I've I actually call him nobbo now. I and and what? new people start, and I go, oh, that's nob. Uh, that's so. <laughs> I can't stop saying. Find that offensive. What does he look? Does he look? He, like? He's no. He's okay. He's okay. Not he's not. He's not bald of a tash. It's not. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Apparently, something... Carl. I think we're having a chat with the yogurt is one of yeah. them that I use. I've used it on you. I, you can use it. You can just adapt it. It's just. Can you imagine? It's such a good phrase, and I, I do. I don't give them credit. I feel no. bad. Well, scouting away online uh, on the YouTube comments, a lot of people oh. mentioned that there was this episode of Love, Death and Robots, which is a Netflix animation series. And apparently there is an episode called uh, When the Yogurt Took Over. 
After scientists accidentally breed super intelligent yogurt, it soon hungers for world domination. So, you know, there's this spate of people online who... um Was that someone from this no, show taking that quote or were they just... Oh, God, no, it would have been completely random, but people like to speculate, don't they, that, you know, Carl has that influence. Yeah, it would have come... What, what you're going to do a synopsis? That was the synopsis. Oh, oh right, okay. What happened? Does it, does it win? I don't know. Check out Does Netflix, find out. All right, it's Will Smith. I don't it? sure ever. Plain of plain. You've got other quotes that you use. Well, we're not doing favourite quotes. No, I've, that I've... will be coming. Wait, let's do this. Favourite quotes is coming later. And we've also yeah. got lots and lots of X of M in the community. And also, I actually do have a track that I'd like to pop into our, what do we call it? The D-Trout Spinners Library. I've actually got a track that I want to put in because well, it's to... kind of brings me on to my next case in point where I love Carl when he's trying to put off people coming on to the show. Ricky yeah. asks for a fat German bloke called Her Helmet and Kate Bush. <laughs> And I love the fact that he so accurately pinpoints like what Kate Bush will be doing, you know, yeah. either practicing piano or making the lentil soup. It's those little details that make him just a fantastic comedian. <laughs> that, and, like and then that. Bob and then Bob, Bob Goldorf, they start talking about Bob Goldorf. That could be Bob Goldorf. <laughs> then I can't, I can't hold it in. But one of my favourite quotes is that uh, I'm not going to go through the phones. It's mental. Oh yeah, that's one. <laughs> Carl getting stressed. Carl getting stressed out because Ricky's making all of these. <laughs> he wants to talk to people. It's a good balance between them. I like that, Ricky and um, <laughs> Carl. This episode, they kind of, I don't know, they seem to mix a bit better. They always go together well, but like they're telling sort of stories and it's not planned. But coming back to golf chat, is this 1955? Yeah. Is a line I've used a hundred th I think you have, actually. On you, everyone. Yeah. You know, because it, it works. It kind of, it's not like random. It's funny. And I steal it. And also, he's having a cigarette by the fire, which you could do, because oh, the smoke and, smoke and ban came in at 2007, wasn't it? I think it was earlier than that. It was it, 2007. Oh, yeah, it probably is, because, yeah, that'll give me two years. Because I, I was smoking then. No, <laughs> yeah. you? Were only, well, I, we used to go to this nightclub in Ipswich. We had a oh, little indie club called Furry, and I remember going there in Ipswich. There was that. No, and it, oh yeah, not that time. But uh, no, this was like a little indie club. It was so hard to find, like, you know, indie culture, you know, like that sort of landfill indie vibe, which we all were so obsessed by back then. But in it, and in it, so it's there, that one room which was like proper indie music where you went in to listen to the killers and all that oh, stuff, yeah, and Franz that. Ferdinand, monkeys, and all that. And then they had another room where they just played like, oh, it was so good. It, they played like jazz music and um, like mm -hmm. swing music, and they had little tables that were lit up with like candles, and everyone was just sitting there smoking. And we thought we were so cool back then, <laughs> Rene. <laughs> so, that was really like, good. Went to drum and bass it nights. Just like Fuck for that. me, hated them. So I used to I. To just chat to the security guy. <laughs> Bored. Fun. Um, I like and the also, fact. I'm just saying, I, I went to went to pubs where they had. I think it was an over twenty seven room. You could only go in there if you're over twenty seven, and it seems so old. Like I was oh. like, well, it's never. I'm never gonna hit that. And just looking back now, it's so young, but yeah. it just seemed to us like. I don't know why they kind of wanted that separation. I don't, I don't. I think I stopped going to clubs when I was like twenty-four. Oh yeah, no, I haven't been to clubs. Oh yeah, about then. I don't know. I think I'd last. No, I'd hate it so much. Like I'm just too tired. Do anything, honestly, anything. It's the queuing that I don't. I think I yeah. enjoy the actual inside. It's the queuing that because uh, uh, well, with this actually brings me to what Ricky says when they're they're talking about waiting for. Uh, the clock to tick over to nine o'clock or whatever oh, yeah, it is. I like that chat because it's really when, that's genuine. Because I can so feel uh, Ricky gets bored. He hates lateness. This comes up a few times in, in this episode, doesn't it? And uh, he says, I'd feel flash, you know, saying, uh, I'm going to wait. <laughs> you know, I'm going to yeah. not pay. He, for... he, he explains that really well. Like if it was a minute, you would kind of. Yeah. But Ricky's Just... got, he's got, it's like you've got spending habits that I would, never ever follow like i'm a bit more you know careful with my money than you i think <laughs> i think that's really. true but it's the fact it. that he's saying you know ricky ricky's uh happy to spend 20 quid on lunch i used to work in um london fields and in, in um in hackney but there was like loads of restaurants there and i'd always make my lunch 
that everyone literally in the office all went out to buy their lunch. And I was like, just what you how much are you spending there? No, no, I'm still at the same company, but this was in a different office area. Yeah, everyone was spending like eight... <laughs> <laughs> they were spending like eight, nine quid on lunch. And I was thinking, am I being really tight here? Or is, but, but I was saying, like, no, that's I, a lot of money. Think how that tops up over the, the week. It's, it's, it can't be a sandwich. There's no sandwich. So is it... I oh, a grilled business. cheese Basically. sandwich there is about six quid. Well, that's not nine quid, is it? You said they spent... Well, yeah, quid. no, it varied between six to nine quid. Yeah, no, I wouldn't send that. I'd spend a fiver. I, I think Steve's about right. But Steve yeah. was a millionaire, and it kind of was... He wasn't a millionaire. It does make me think sort of... I know I do spend more than Steve on stuff, and I think, well, can I afford this? And I can't. But I like... I do love how much food chat there was, because I'm a big foodie as well. You know, the fact that Ricky... you know, He's talking about how he's sort of screamish, isn't he? Yeah, I can so imagine that. I'm, not, I'm as annoyed as Steve is annoyed yeah. at Ricky. It is a miserable experience, isn't it, going to eat with someone if they're fussy? But especially that restaurant, which, like, they would have had to change oh. every single thing, which they would have, because it's Ricky Gervais. But what, Heston I'd Blumenthal? Love to go to that restaurant. I'd love to. Wouldn't you love to go? Yeah, the fact that I'd love to go there. Love to go. I've loved to. I've never been to a Michelin star restaurant, and I've always been envious of anyone that does. I'd love I to go to one. Who knows down the road has a Michelin <laughs> um, But, no, yeah, no, I Ricky is... Michelin um... star restaurant either but i like it sometimes we go to restaurants i like going to restaurants yeah that's what i mean it's a you great know, feeling normal, isn't it right? but you know you sort of then you pay you know 50 quid are you going to tell the listeners now by the way that you're not going to edinburgh well i didn't did we say last time i i yeah I don't well, think we said it you haven't got a replacement so if anyone wants it for money <laughs> um no, but Can you it, imagine if a listener, yeah, let's, no, let's make this an open invite. Does any listeners want to come and share some accommodation with me in Edinburgh and come yeah. for a five day trip to the festival and we can go and see shows? Uh, you, all you need to do is pay Gary 500 quid because he can't go because he's too ill. Well, I, yeah, no, don't. I'm, jo- <laughs> I'm joking. Literally now, even in my throat. But yeah, I, I might go if no one else go. wants to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. has it and. I'm gonna lose five hundred quid. No other no, listeners touch. You know, I still. <laughs> yeah, no, please do. But five hundred. Okay. <laughs> that you know, money cash. is just resting in my account. So yeah, he, the, Ricky's a vegan now. He's a proper vegan, and you can kind of see how that I happens su- in a way. I was surprised, and I have forgotten that he even ate meat then. Didn't you think? Because he was he was interested in it. He's always loved animals. I didn't know he's vegan now. Yeah, you've got to be. I mean, the amount of who was it? Frankie Boyle. Did it? Oh, that one, yeah. And he said, What's, What are you hiding? What have you done to people? <laughs> putting so much animal. But yeah. Um, that is such a good. I love vegans on Twitter. I support them. And I <laughs> pretended I'm a vegan a number of times. <laughs> I, have, I, have you, did you get better now with your, your eating habits? Because we're all told to eat less meat, aren't we? No. What? <laughs> in the last week? or? <laughs> I, or don't you know. I don't know. That whole cow like... you're gnawing on right now. <laughs> Well, it's not good to have red meat too often. Yeah. That's not good. I but think I've cut out red meat. I'd never cut out cheese. I'd never go vegan. Like vegan cheese, I, all right, it's it's something, but it's not cheese. It doesn't taste like cheese. I can totally live without cheese, me. Not bothered about it. Really? Not bothered about it at all, mate. A little could... bit of Parmesan, but that's it. Yeah, I've seen you have a, a bit of Parmesan on. Yeah, well, I've, it's, not, it's not my favourite thing to eat. Um, no, I'd never go vegan ever. And what's this thing about what milk, right? Is milk. Yeah. So what everything has milk. Like, so they do milk from almonds. I don't know how. Yeah. You milk little how almonds. How long you'd have to crush almonds to make it's milk. not done like that. How is, is it? it done then? It, it must how is almond milk done? But I saw milk that was pea, like literally peas milk. Yeah. I don't mind peas. I've got uh, some peas in my freezer. You should yeah. put them on my They'll head. They'll stay there till you move out. But peas, milk? No. Why? Like, well, but it's better to drink any kind of um, plant-based uh, substitute than, than oh, cow milk, for yes, sure. Yes, I know cow milk obviously is designed for a cow, which has four stomachs. And people say, because they don't drink milk in China, and they're like, they can smell the milk. They think like, English people milk. smell of milk. Yeah, smell it, of milk. Kind of. Smell. Th- so yeah, this well, is a segment about the word smell. Could you say that's smell? From, no, that's from um, that's from uh, teach English with Ricky Jones. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, smell. No, it's stink. They don't smell. Stink, stonk. 
You stonk. I love that. I, I do love when uh, Ricky oh, comes know. across Suzanne's instructions for Carl to cook. Yeah. That's that is just so lovely. It's because it's so genuine. Yeah. And I can totally imagine that. Poor I don't think woman. it was a mistake, though. No. Not them. I, that's do not. I can't believe. No. They, imagine the coincidence for that. You know, someone, yeah. Even if it's Suzanne, like, this is funny. Where so, was the where was the note? Where did they find yeah. it? He said she found it and then she was forward. He was forward. Yeah, it don't, I don't, yeah, I don't it doesn't yeah, something in how she got it doesn't oh, make sense. It's not, but everything else, I believe she actually wrote that. She didn't yeah. write it for Ricky. I think she just wrote it and thought, yeah, this would be good for the show. So it's only Oh my god. See, my girlfriend will often like if she goes out, she'll say, All right, Miles, I'm I'm going to work. Don't forget, you've got to take the washing out of the, the washing machine. And well, can you water the plants? I'm just and can say, you? <laughs> can, that's the big one. <laughs> can, and can you uh, put uh, the food that was outside in the fridge? Uh, I can just about good, remember yeah. three tasks. <laughs> do, you do not do those tasks because I, you know, he's told me the plant you didn't water once. <laughs> the, and then when, when oh, that down, time, yeah, that was bad. Did one water, and I think, yeah. But I'd have to say, you know, your relationship. You know when he uh, when he says about cooking, I, I mean yeah. I think this is this is stupider than the yogurt comment is the fact that he put sausages in a toaster. Yeah, what's going on there? But it's kind of it's not the weirdest thing to do. Like for I know a, what you mean. Child, I wouldn't do it, but you could cook them for long enough. What kind of sausage are you talking about, though? Walls, maybe walls. You or... think you think if you were to slice a walls, which the the content, the meat content's very low. No, you, you could... think the rusk would just about get you by and cook. No, you, you put them in. Yeah, the, the, they would slot in. Yeah, so it's going to cook it because I know people who do potato waffles in their toast. Yeah, well, that's different to raw meat, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it is different. I have to say, that was bizarre though. When the first time, first time I saw a waffle in a toast, I was like, wow. What whoa. sort of waffle are we talking? Because the Americans do square waffle. waffle. Yeah, but no, is it bird's eye? Potato, yeah. But, oh, yeah, yeah. Why, I was like, oh, my God, why didn't I think of this? Because, you know, when you go to uni, everyone brings about four toasters, four kettles, four microwaves. Mm. <laughs> so, they? Like, your house just looks like some sort of weird sort you of You do know the housekeeping degree. Well, that's what happens because everyone buys this stuff, don't they? You, you get... No, um, you, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I was going to say, you do have four kettles, toasters, and everything, but that's because everyone brings their own, not... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I thought you meant everyone bought for. No, yeah. you individually they. Oh, bought. yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, they first I did. I think I got a toaster provided. I think. Well, that would have been better. But there was some girl at uni. She she microwaved um egg. No, this was that number. This this was uh, so <laughs> she cooked um scrambled egg in the microwave. Uh, what yeah, the fuck? No, that, yeah, no, I've, I think I've done that. I've certainly seen it. Did you? Um, yeah, it's not, it's not that bad. It doesn't. There's nothing. The frying for certain things adds to it. Do you not agree? Point. Like frying it's much healthier. scrambled eggs takes much no, noise. Yeah, no, it's quicker, easier. I put salmon in the microwave. I don't know if you've done that. Oh, I do do that, but it's quite smelly. Ill, quite ill, quite a lot. <laughs> I was, the I was, thing, do you know the thing that I used to always put in the microwave was like that you definitely shouldn't do is that you know when you microwave. I mean, your microwave and rice clearly all the time. You, you and Uncle Ben, yeah. you got some love affair. But is uh, I, I used to always eat Chinese like the next morning. Oh, you did foil. Fucking, oh, I fucking you know. love. But my nan used to microwave um bacon. She had like a sort of mm. like a a pla- it was so weird. She had like a plastic griddle with like a kind of like a plastic cloche that you put put on there. You put your rashes down. You put it in a microwave and it like grills. But it's not. It that was so bizarre. It, it does work. It no, does I, work. I can do my, uh, bacon in the microwave. I mean, it won't be exactly like grilling. Like no, that's no, no. where the microwave does lose. You do lose something. Salmon and bacon, but scrambled egg, yeah. And it's healthier because you don't... Uh, yeah, those. that's true. I think he could have got away with sausages if they were like frankfurters, you know? You could just about get away with that. Yeah, they don't need to be cooked, so it doesn't matter. Really, just, I like the fact that Carl just goes, just warm them up. <laughs> just want to warm them up. Yeah. No, I don't know <laughs> Despite the fact that they're just, just sitting there. <laughs> I can totally believe that. Like, I don't, it is stupid, yeah, don't do it. But it's like, well, yeah, it would. If you put them in long enough, right on the highest setting... They're gonna cook and right next yeah. to the heat. <laughs> Anything's gonna cook in a microwave. Um, but that's a funny segment. That whole, you know, 
And Ricky and does I, it well, Carl does it well, and just the cafetiere. I can't just the cafetiere. Small words are behind the cafetiere. I can't have the cafetiere. <laughs> I've used <gasps> Oh my god! I think I have definitely used cooking oil instead of olive oil before. I'm um, sure that's a faux pas. Oh. Someone else has done. Yeah, I don't. I probably have. You, you don't go. How to gas that? Oh no! No, I know. What are the rules as well? Are you meant to? I've never known this. Are you meant to like fry with olive oil, or is it just for dressings? No, you can fry. Absolutely, you fry. I always fry but, with olive oil when I fry. I think it's a. I think it's one of those contentious issues, though, for a lot of people. What's contentious? The health that you're not. Or? Yeah, like it loses its proper like expensive properties. Olive oil. Yeah, you don't. They kind of maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. Larry, expensive that's as one. wine. I remember someone came on Dragon's Den, and he was just like, he was. He, I don't know what he was. Yeah, it was olive oil, but that wasn't. Yeah, yeah he, he said it's not for frying; <laughs> it's just for tasting. And it's like you'd never know. He said, "Oh, you you never guess. You think this is just going to taste like olive oil, but it tastes mm. different, and they can taste." He sort of did different ones, and he gave it to them, and they were like, "Yeah, it's really it's good for you." What's the contentious bit? If you're meant to like, because I I didn't know if it's like a dressing, it like loses its properties when you fry it. Yeah, I mean, it loses properties when you fry it, but when you fry it, you're not after the olive oil. When you're, say, putting it on a salad, it's the olive oil. That yeah, it's for the dressing, it. yeah. But no, don't use cooking oil. But no. back then, we didn't, you didn't know. It sounds like smoking. Like, we didn't, I don't know. We just, didn't know, we didn't know. There wasn't much health stuff about oil, was there? I don't know. Okay. There's a brilliant setup this uh, that continues into the podcast, but I think this is the mm. first time it's mentioned. Is the charity that Carl signs up to? Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, I'd call it June or whatever. I, I just, <laughs> I love that. So he's, it's, he gives her a five. And he says, "Oh, why me? Why me? Why does that person stop me? Why me?" Yeah. And uh, says, "Oh, giving away, giving away money because this is." He was already annoyed because in series two he says, "I keep coming back." And I'm checking it to make sure if, if I ever go to Africa and I need to hammer mm. and there isn't one, I'll be livid. So yeah. this is just a carry on that he's yeah. so angry. Yeah, that she's got a tan. Yeah, it's so sick, but it's funny. So like, I wonder if he did really get a picture of a woman with a tan. But, but no. <laughs> just, what, I'm imagining tan. like a sort of, I don't know, like an extra from Benidorm or something. <laughs> I, I reckon now, right, he pays a lot of money to charity. He's not as annoyed as that. Because if you were as annoyed as that, you wouldn't you wouldn't make a thing of it, I don't think. Like, yeah. he's doing it for humour. He, do, he doesn't mind a fiver. But that, five is, I give a fiver to an animal charity. But the, the, the 50p comes back again. And oh, I just, love that. Cause, and it's always good. Every time it comes up, and I'd forgotten that it would come up in Series <laughs> 4, but it comes <laughs> up and it's as good as ever. And they sort of, and it's dying down a bit. And Ricky just says, give him a keg of beer. As well, <laughs> like he just he has to kind of put that in. Like it's just brilliant. Right. Like it's the last fifty P chat they they ever had. I oh, can't that's so sad. Isn't it? Be. Oh, then maybe they did on the podcast. I think they do bring it up. They definitely would. Mm -hmm. it, it definitely comes back in like interviews. Those, but I like the fact he says going from my pockets. So I didn't have it there. <laughs> Can you imagine someone going in your pockets and finding fifty P? But the thing that's funny that I think. Is because they both mean it so much. They both their positions. They're like they're not joking. Yeah, he genuinely just like, explains it sort of. Well, no, it's not. You know, your decision. And Carl's like, I don't know who to. It's kind of I'm. I don't know who do you back because sometimes I, I, Steve is right technically, but and Steve would, is right. But I, I, there's no way I would be that fussed about fifty p. I take to take quid well, out of the Patreon account. <laughs> I had to take it out because you owe me money. You Eight should, quid. Oh, no, yeah, but that no, that is a good point. Though. At what at what point does it become awkward to ask people money back? And yeah. the, and I'm, I'm I'm only bringing this up because you mentioned it. But if you if it is more than a fiver, I think I'm well within my right to chase for that money. You don't How chase, it, chase me. Is that as well as the inference? I mean, I'm only joking about. No, no, no. I I know you're joking, but what I'm saying is, yeah, yeah, this is a broader was, point. Fiver, yeah. That's I think that's when you cap it. Yeah, but and I think if if you lent someone four quid, and I yeah, pay you back, it still would be. That's what oh, I, I I went for drinks once. I mean, this is pretty tight. This probably says more about my character than anything. I was it was a new sort of like a new relatively new friend. She said, "Oh, come meet us. We're by the canal. We're having some drinks." Oh, by the way, could you pick us up some like gin and tonic cans? And I was like, "Yeah, sure," but I um, don't know if I'm gonna yeah. get this money back. <laughs> 
yeah, I obviously like didn't that. say that, but I was being quite sort of. I was like, yeah, fine. What do you want? So, I, I, and and also she said, oh, we need some for my friends as well. I was like, yeah, this is kind of annoying now. So I got I got like uh, I don't know ten to fifteen pounds worth, and I was like. Right. And I just couldn't enjoy the drinks. Yeah. <laughs> I was so annoyed that I had to buy them drinks. But she, I, if someone, I assume it was implied in what she was saying that she was going to pay you. She was, yeah, yeah, but it's, yeah, but it's, no, no, of course she was, but it's not like, people don't deal in cash anymore, do they? So then you've got the whole awkward thing of, you know, asking for their bank details. Can uh, I Monzo I, you? I, I don't have Monzo. Everyone seems to have Monzo apart from me. And it's like, oh, it's just awkward, isn't it? Then you've got to ask people for money. Oh, do you need the bank details? Oh, yeah. And then I'll, send over a really specific amount i've got 12 pounds can i have 12 pounds please he does send specific amounts i'll just round down 12 pound 60. yeah you know he will and he will and i just i won't i will round it down i will always round it down but the point is is that wrong to ask for that money back no that's what i'm saying but what if it was 50p like you still got, definitely not still, like in principle it's there it's still it's rude not to pay back but i don't know you'd never lend someone 50p like if it was four quid i wouldn't do you know what, i right? mean yeah what it, what are you lending them for 50p i guess that would be like oh can i have 50p for like a public yeah, toilet or something like that premium <laughs> there have been times yeah where i've lent a fair tenner or 20 quid and they i think they genuinely forgot but you're right i don't know like i didn't feel it still felt weird to ask them because it's most embarrassing then that's what i mean it's embarrassing yeah but if you some people forget and and i think then steve checks his bank account the that you know he gave me his car (laughs) one i'll get cigarettes well i thought oh wow that's amazing because you never buy cigarettes at that time you have since actually and um, no because i want to check but but not then (laughs) i i thought he meant like because he gave me his card i thought wow he's so generous for once i've never known him like because just equalizes in a tiny way like 10 five five years ago. and by the time i got back this was about six years ago so phone banking yeah. wasn't as you know um, fast as it people was didn't have it yeah and he was already <laughs> right on it he was <laughs> so angry but yeah we had a good time. We did had you a, probably spent about 80 quid Oh rounds. man, we've so spent that, so much money on our account. I always have a problem with um the term, and I'm gonna compare it to this. So sorry, listeners, do cover your ears if you don't like this phrase. But smelly eyebrows to me yeah. isn't as bad as smuggling seaweed. Uh when you say bad, as insulting to that person or no, don't not like. doesn't bother me the insult. It's to me smuggling seaweed. Don't like it as a phrase. In the English language, it's not cold. And I, as as an evocative phrase, it's very powerful. But it kind of makes me a little bit sick. Yeah, I think, yeah. It's, I've, I don't know. Yeah, it's probably the least offensive thing I can think of. But that's not the funny bit. It's where it says, "Well, forget the uh, forget the underarm." Make the underarm. That's the Make- bit that makes that. I love that. I bet she did. You know, I've been to nudist places. Well, you know, the beach yeah. that we yeah. that I live. Yeah, I've been past. Brighton's got years. one, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Brighton's nudist. Beach. Yeah, I don't go there. I haven't been. But it's got a sand dune that kind of um covers it, so you can't see. You have to get jump over it. Yeah, but I uh, use a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> What do you make? This is probably I don't know how many times um Ricky says that he's an atheist during uh because obviously I don't know if you know this Gary but Ricky is an atheist. Oh, he's a Buddhist. Yeah. <laughs> what, he but does he doesn't show that much. Well, he says that when they're talking about Adam and Eve, he says, yeah. and if you believe in God, which you know clearly I don't. He you is don't kind of, that part of him, do you? I mean, I I agree with the sentiment probably of well maybe I'm more agnostic, but he's over like he. He devotes so much um, of his time and energy, and he he sort of speaks about it like he's an expert, and he isn't because no one is, and they don't know. But like he I, he can you know cut his like kind of how he's with trans is sort but, of a thread, but it's, how he's is in this show saying that that's fine. He's sort of he's okay, but it became like. I think he'd rather be known as a prominent atheist yeah. than, a, than a comedian. But Sorry. what I like about it is Carl's, but Carl's more open to learn when he says, yeah. what about Adam and Eve? And he says, um, you know, what's, what what would have happened if they didn't get on? Like Carl's open it's to ideas. And I, 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 yeah, no, it's a, it is a good point. But I like that Carl's that open-minded, that he asks questions, whereas really, Ricky's a lot more, he just shuts things down if he goes, no, 
I know, yeah. I know better. Yeah. And and I think that what that annoys me more about Ricky, and then that will always then circulate and come back to the point that he knows better and he's an atheist and everyone needs to know that. And again, it's not it's not a big, big observation of this show. It's just little parts of his character. I just don't see how like religion it can be frustrating, I get that for, for some people. Oh, but I don't yeah. I, I don't think like I mean, of course, there's loads of reasons to to not be a fan of religion, but he's so angry by it, like. Yeah, but not then. I don't think in this show. Yeah, not in the same way. But But if you think of politics, though, or animals, or fame, or one of the stand-ups, oh no, Spark. What's the one? Yeah, he devotes a long time to it. It's really funny, though. He's funny then. Like I don't think he goes overboard. Like you know, he's overboard the boat. Oh, put right. Join Patreon for more of it. (laughs) Um, ad lib that was not we didn't write that no it didn't but yeah no religion I think he's he's like I think he'd rather be a Richard Dawkins bigger like in history when he's seen sort of than a comedian and I, I know okay he's done both he's still successful at both he sort of people are interested for both but he's it's okay and I like that you know I agree with a lot of his thoughts about religion it's just you know no one can put it definitively can they oh no. what if i said what are you what are you i think i am probably an atheist not agnostic no but i, but I don't think it bothers me like I, I just genuinely don't think it bothers me i'm just uh no. so if you were like speaking to someone you knew was religious yeah. you would would you sort of bring it up as a point i don't think you would because no we haven't spoken about it but that's i just I, I don't think it's that interesting to talk about I think that some of what he's talked about over the years... I mean, unless I was having dinner with, like, I don't know, a member of Al-Qaeda or, like, you know, but I don't think that was that would ever happen. Put in my cottaging material. <laughs> <laughs> no, or, like, I don't know. No, yeah. he's, I, I agree. He's put... Actually, he's spoken well on religion. I've liked it. I'm not going to say, no, I don't... You know, everything he said is terrible, but he just became... I think he sort of got attention from the sort of crowd he's got now and i'm not saying they're yeah. bad but it's that's yeah he's gone huge on that and he loves richard dawkins and yeah i can i've seen richard dawkins who would don't necessarily like debate someone very religious and yeah he's, he's a good debater and people write him off and he's not terrible so it's not like ricky's terrible with atheism he's just like you how can you be so sure like, there's no way, like, you're an atheist, I'm agnostic, but, you know, I think everyone should be agnostic, really. I mean, we're not in a religious country anyway, so it's a bit, bit serious, should we? Let's have a break. <laughs> okay. No, I was going to say, you no, know, in America, it's very different because, you know, the the church is everything, and the Baptist Well, church. incidentally, before we have our little break, oh, I would like to put America. out... Yeah. Let's put let's put our little call out for we we want we we put we put it out there last week and now let's cement our position. We're looking for American listeners to do a special a show where we're going to discuss the differences between American British comedy. We're going to talk about why um how well the XFM shows travel overseas mm-hmm. and just generally meet some of you American listeners because they can sometimes be a bit uh UK centric. So mm-hmm. I think we can get some very interesting results. If you'd like to come on that show, do get in touch with us, spinners podcast at gmail.com or on spit or on Twitter. Pod- I know, so good. very good at that. Like, it's podcast, it. but um, no, I was, yeah. you know, if you are from Canada, please call under your little rock because we're not interested. <laughs> no, Canada's like, I, I, yeah, that counts, I think, that, in, that in area, North America, but not sort of Alaska. Yeah. And yeah, we'll do, we'll do Europe another day. Yeah. All right, let's have a break. <laughs> when um, I think about my good times smoking. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then, and then the fact that, you know, we won't do it together. Because if we both quit, which is a good thing, we can both agree on that. It's just like mm, all those can't. all yeah. those happy fun times and pub gardens where we would like share yeah. cigarettes. It was part of our personality and part of our character. And you just think, oh. Well, is it, I mean, I, didn't, I think of this. Well, I mean, what, what you know, traditions. Put it on the posters. But what are we going to have instead? We're going to have to open a bag of Skittles and just have them instead. 
I think I'll probably go and buy 20 mile brands. <laughs> <laughs> and we will both smoke them. But yeah, it's kind of, it is really. And it's, we've always sat in the garden and that could yeah. be literally all weathers. Uh, it's been ice cold. We'll be the only people there. So I mean, summer. we'll still be in the pub garden, but we, we should be less nostalgic about these things, maybe. Yeah, of course, well, about cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. But well, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Because End of an era. I think I stopped. Yeah, you stopped. I would smoke only with you. And you, oh, you start vaping. No, well, I vaped as well, but you used, and then you bought everything. So we yeah. kind of, we did balance out. Life finds a way, Jurassic yeah. World. Um, statement right now as well. Well, we're talking. <laughs> so we're talking about uh anniversaries and stuff it, gary can you believe it would have been this year uh yeah, probably about a few it. months ago maybe yeah. i think it was may or whatever i put out Summer. an episode on our patreon we so occasionally we put out some of our old um hospital radio shows on our patreon so do join there for loads more uh, Miles and Gary. put out the very content. very first of us about the very very first one well the oh. oldest recording one we got we got there but but anyway well, to, we, some, to commemorate this uh situation okay. this uh milestone we're going to do a live stream podcast next weekend yeah come on. Uh, it's <laughs> It's likely to be on what would the date be? Saturday, 12. 12. Saturday the thirteenth. When it's really, likely to be. Annoy you at work where everyone Friday the thirteenth is like. Oh yeah. Same jokes all every year, and it's just yeah. It's... Or pinch of the punch first of the month. People oh, I did a tweet. That. I did a great tweet. I will. I'll send you my tweet later. Can't Maybe wait. We'll put it out on the main channel. Maybe if, it, if it's good enough, it's got to pass the test. <laughs> anyway, should we do some? Should we do some favourite quotes? Oh yeah, but I just wanted. To, there was a couple of things that I can't. Oh, do. go on. Funny because on my uh, junk email, there's one that says there is two dollars left over from the shipping, and there is like a theory that because we're talking about low amounts, that if you put a really low amount, it actually tempts people more because it's kind of because it seems realistic like they're not lying i feel like fraud people yeah i'm just saying like i've got here eliminate toe fungus quickly naturally um fuck bloody request i don't because i check <laughs> but anyway i was uh, there was a couple of points so can i slide them in Mars yeah go on man go on story. i know he loves it when i ask him like <laughs> my dear I do it? actually. Oh yeah, the Vic and Bob. They mention the Vic and Bob show. Do they? So, yeah, it's really, really quick, and I'd never heard of it. I missed that. Yeah, I didn't even. I thought you'd maybe hear, but I've just written Vic and Bob, and it was some show that they were doing that I'd never heard of. If anyone has listened to this week, let us know and go back and listen. Oh yeah, yeah just a little. This is the link, I think, to. President Ricky, but he's kind of not showing it in a really arrogant way. But just waste he throws in the Australopithecus. Oh yeah, he knows it, and he—that's the only time Rick is then sort of. He's more about seeming intelligent, mm. like he's happy to be mocked in any way. But it's not a major point. It's just that now, if you think of him, he, that would he would love to talk about Australopithecus, yeah. or whatever, which he doesn't know about a lot of the time. But he knows that he knows more than Steve and more than Carl. Not because he's older, and he just he knows enough to look like he knows a lot more in front of them. And it's just he uses it. It's not terrible in the show, but it it's just it reminds me of kind of what he's like now, and that it, it everything else on this show, whatever whether it is or not. He does to be funny, mm. but that he just very, very minor. But you know, he's done it before with art, is a particular thing. You know, yeah. he, it, it's not so much arrogance, it's being he would put being clever or knowledgeable, like a scientist, <laughs> above being funny. And on XFM shows, pretty much every single one, apart from those times, he's doing it to be funny. There's so yeah. much now, he's not, he, he might be funny, he might not. Uh, particular time still you know a good he can be funny but he's not trying to be funny that's what he's trying mm. to be brilliant you know and he's yeah. easy, like he you know it's easy with steve and carl they're not idiots but yeah it's kind of you know steve would never kind of challenge ricky on something like that anyway but ricky doesn't know a lot he knows a, a lot about 
certain subjects. A few things. There's other subjects he knows enough to seem like he knows mm. loads because it doesn't matter what he gets wrong slightly because Steve and Carl aren't going to... And probably he taught the XFM listeners probably wouldn't know either, so... Well, let's move on to something that we both know more about. You're going to cut that out? I might cut some of it out. No, no, no. (laughs) And it was... I I think it's worth, you know, it's not... It's worth something. Anyway, let's do some favourite quotes because you know a lot about that, don't you? Oh, and I'm not really bothered. I cheer up like loads. I don't know about you. I've got a few. Hang on. Let me just... You go first. What have I written down? Egg. Oh, yeah, just his... <laughs> egg. It's where he, oh, he says egg. Uh, Yoko. If, egg. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. No. Oh, no. Yoko. Oh, no. Oh, 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 just, oh, oh, oh. He just... Yeah, he does have perfect. Don't like it, don't fancy it. I'll never change my view. <laughs> mm. That's very good. That's your girlfriend, Carl. Yeah. My one is uh, go and get some more balls. What is that? Wait, tell me. That's at the start where... <laughs> he, oh yeah, he, yeah. He agonizes over whether to have six balls. He goes, No, that'll be enough. And Rick says, get some more. He has a bad shot and he goes, Go get some more balls. <laughs> yeah, that, that was like totally unplanned. He I, I yeah. they knew they were gonna tell it, but it, it was just brilliant, like how he tells it. <laughs> Go and get some more balls. Dukes of Hazard. That wasn't my I've written that somewhere else. So ha okay, I don't I can't remember exactly. I, this is gonna be difficult with my throat, but you know I like to do them in the book. I don't think I'm going to do this. Ha! They're probably listening. Oh, God. That's a, it's You're going to pay for that, it. aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Well, I love the fact because that's actually a cliffhanger because that, that carries on. I get signed off ne- for another month from work. <laughs> Yeah, well, that that actually is a hangover, which goes on to the next episode, isn't it? Because as he, he says, oh, Suzanne yeah. has to pick up the pieces. Says he, he, so when he says weddings, he doesn't mean you; he means weddings in general. He says, yeah, off the fact that you've got to pick up after people. It's funny. Um, Very funny. And I just wanted to mention oh, one thing. I just because uh, you've mentioned the link to the other show. Tell me, that I can't remember the answer. Hmm. When they talk about Doritos having a yeah. oven pack, some, did Ricky tell that exact story? I'm sure I heard that before. Or is Steve, was that? That's definitely a story that um, he says in fame, I think he says, he uses the exact same way. He says like, someone says breakfast, breakfast or crisps or whatever. And he says, did I ever get to a point where you think nine packets of Doritos? It's like, yeah, yeah. that definitely is not the first time he said that. Or the first time you will say it. I just, it um, definitely comes back, yeah. It's a point that he's going to, edit out so welcome back it's not whatever <laughs> it's... I, you know you just, just we spoke for about 10 it's minutes it's fine we can no keep i'm joking i'm not you know I'm just all right what's I'm your on next Penza song came, mate but not with her nose yeah but not with her um, nose. it's a good point as well monkey stood on a chair cooking yeah. veg yeah it's i just think that's things. so just I can almost see it as a film in my in my eyes. I must imagine like a Ratatouille style reveal where he walks, monkey turns around on a high stool, just popping in some carrots into a into a stop. But he builds up the tension. You know, it's a good he does. Film, He's a brilliant right? storyteller because it's, it's actually it's it's hard to tell good monkey news. Can I also say I love our listeners and people on Twitter because there was one day it was quite a few days ago. I tell you what, I put the hours in a, a few times on Twitter. Well, Do you remember when there was all of those um, re- resignations before Boris yeah. finally resigned? And after every re- single resignation, I wrote, Monday's off, Monday's oh, off, did you, did you Monday's you off, on? Monday's off. How did that do? Uh, it's not that well, <laughs> but it entertained me for a bit. And then the, the, the follow-up to that was, yeah, loads of people, there was some significant monkey news one day. I can't remember what it was about, but I, I must have had people tag us about 12 times and I was like, this is brilliant. This is so funny. (laughs) So thank you to everyone who tweeted us that monkey news. No, I think it was like a monkey delivering a pizza or something. (laughs) What was that? that What was the news story that that was linked to? Oh, it's just like a little... Oh, it's just... It was like a little gif or a video or something like that. It's very funny. Good job with the resignations. Did you do every one? Just oh, I tried to do every single one as they came in. I just put Mondays off. I know. I was tired by the end of it. What's your next one? Oh, okay. He's saying that with real, you know, firm. He should be firm. <laughs> Sorry, we can't get through this. No, I'm trying. Yeah, yeah, I'm just looking. Because I was, look behind, there's a big oak tree. <laughs> That's quite good, that one. I'm not going to go through the phones. It's mental. You it's just one of those things that you, you sort of... <laughs> He shouldn't say that because that is not something you say on a radio station. You should be willing to talk to people. So I'm not, look, I'm not going to do it. It's, me- it's mental. 
But if there's one producer on one show who probably <laughs> deserves not, to, can you imagine like if he's answering, and he does because they speak about him actually answering phone. What the hell? I mean, he's on it all the time, you know, if he's answering phone calls. I would have thought that even XFM, quite a small station there, you have like, you don't have like just a producer who answers the phone calls. You would have yeah. another researcher or another producer definitely. Yeah, because you were the class. Talk sport, didn't you? Talk sport. I, I did know, I did an internship at Talk Radio. And, well, it's uh, that, that was... then. It wasn't already. Did, no, there's like... no. They're in the same building because it's I the thought... wire, the group. They're oh, yeah, yeah. So you've got you got downstairs. You have got Virgin. Then upstairs is Talk. Then you got Talk Talk Sport. You did. And, you uh... did Hawksby and Jacobs, didn't you? I love. No, that no, no. I did. Um, I can't remember. Who it was John watch? Holmes. I did okay. some interning for them. Bit of production work there. Yeah, but th that was good. Leave this in. <laughs> um, no, sorry, it's my question. But yeah, I'm just it's it's amazing kind of I would I, go I, back, I would I would love to make a career out of being a radio I'd love to be a radio producer. That'd be like my dream job. That's not how we you want to be a presenter. Radio Well I'd like yeah, but radio producer no, would be set You second. would be good at both, because I wouldn't. You'd be a great producer. And editor and all that, you know. Yeah, I don't say that now because I've you know, made my bed now. <laughs> yeah, well, well. Um, you don't have to do it tonight. But no, I'm just, it, uh, you want to be a presenter and it doesn't, you don't get on air. Presenters is so rare. I wonder if anyone remembers this on Talk Sport, James Whale, who wasn't like a sports, he was late night, but he had a producer, Ash. And that's the only other time he was like, he used Ash and he would pretend to be angry with him and seemed to genuinely get angry with him. And it kind of worked, but it, that's not how it happens. I want to yeah. be, you know, just get on air. We had someone last week say something about, would Carl have got on air if it had mm. not been Ricky? Not in a million years. It's not because he's not, he has got the talent, but he would have chipped in a bit. No way. So it's not Carl's looking down on Carl. Carl's he would have been a different, he, I reckon he would have been a different, maybe he would have been a different person. I mean, no one knows because if he never opened up and came out of his shell, who knows, he might not have been as like sure of his opinions and stuff. He might have just been like a bit more introverted than he is now because I think he's definitely got the capacity to be both. But it's, it is funny, those little butterfly effect moments, what, what could have been. Anyway, what's your next? No, no, it's um... funny that you guys are saying so because you, you know, he's kind of mocked so much for actually doing proper got the skills as a producer but they mock him as a producer so mm. i don't know if he would have taken confidence from that but he would he's as intro i think he would be exactly how he is now in a small yeah. house that's basically yeah. <laughs> in a small house um okay he turns around and goes got more balls okay we've done actually rolling about on his back yeah actually, I like that. No, actually because I, I can imagine he would actually do that. If you listen, uh, what's the word? If you squint your ears, bad turn the phrase, you can actually hear him say, like a tortoise, they're both laughing. And it's one of those little things that you, you've got to listen really carefully, but you can just hear it. Little, like little Easter eggs. Like yeah, little one. Easter egg, yeah. I didn't, um, I didn't notice that. He does, he says, yeah, my next one, I don't mind no legs. I don't mind no legs, Carl. <laughs> That's good, yeah. I mean, good, it's good that their dynamic this show is, you know, particularly good. So this is just a really funny. Yeah, I, I love, love that. that. It's just um, really funny. Well, That's the funny well, bit of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, there's forty nine of them. <laughs> just, that's brilliant. Forty nine as well. He <laughs> says it just brilliantly yeah. as they go into a track. It's per yeah, that's actually, you know, it's kind of shambolic. Of to be that sham between them, and it's got going into songs at the right yeah. time and out of songs. That's not easy. But to do it all the time, I'm not saying they get it perfect or it's brilliant every time, but it's even when you don't notice that bit, it's kind of that's good. You know, they're doing it really well. Or it's funny, but it's hard to do, especially again, because he's talking the whole time. So how does he, I don't know how he does both. We've sat on air. Remember when we sat and we spent half the show each doing running the deck. I couldn't yeah. do it. I was every, I couldn't do it. I can't talk and kind of. Because most, that's, that's why like most people have producers like who do that for you. <laughs> Yeah, but he's a presenter as well, basically. And he's producing yeah. and he's kind of, he's doing a lot of work. And I'm just saying it was a little point because we said it before, but going in and out of songs, it's not... It's a skill. He gets it right. Sometimes you don't need words. It's the exact point. 
then it's yeah. fine a lot of the time. That was my it's point. You can time it one second. <laughs> um, okay, not twice, certainly. Not twice. Yeah, so, I, I love that. Him. He's done that before, I think. And that, I've, <laughs> that's one. It'll be Bucket. Is Bucket a swear word? I've always, my, my, I remember my nan used to tell me off by saying the word Bucket. Well, your nan and my nan probably have diff. Well, how, what do you interpret the meaning of the word? Because well, to, I, I know mean? what, how I would describe it. Um, yeah. And it's about, I mean, I think we can sort of talk around it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. not heterosexual sex, I'd say. Yeah, but I would like. Yeah, I would use buggered, but probably just without that connotation, without any real meaning. Just my like... nan used to have a go at me for saying the word knackered because knackered is is actually when you're tired from sex. Did she tell you that? Like, no, the, it's like, true. The time I think it's true. Okay, that might be true, but it's I don't know. That sounds spurious. I want listeners um, <laughs> to know because I don't. Know. But okay. yeah, the people like my grandma. She, there's words that, but like, she won't. If I say fucking cars, like ah, yeah. she won't, but she'll tell the fuck off. But she'll yeah. happily do that. Like she'll or she'll say not to me, fuck off. But she'll happily say shit. And but there's sort of antiquated ones that I would just see as you know they're nothing. But she's a swearer. That's a good trooper. And uh, next one, small bottle behind the cafetiere. Oh, yeah. Just you could take that and just say cafetiere. And not cafetiere. Yeah. Remove the stones. You can have that as well for free. Yeah. All right. You can't have my ticket to Edinburgh for free, though. <laughs> well, don't play sport where you've got to bend over. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my last one is oh, I love I love this one. I wasn't going to put it in, but actually, it really made me laugh this time. So I'm going to put it in. I don't. I don't know, okay. No, well. it says I don't think people are going to walk to Edinburgh. I very much doubt that people are going to fly to Addis Ababa to go and see Coldplay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> and it's just Addis Ababa. It's something it, funny about that location. Yeah, and he does. It's a sort of. I think he'd like to that. But using that location is funny, but it also like this to be clever, you know, because people. Would yeah, it that. does. Yeah, that ma- that made him sound more clever than the sh- the, the word about the yeah, monkeys. Because he didn't, he, he just used it. Yeah, because it was for being funny. Isn't this funny though? Sometimes he seems more clever when he's being funny as opposed to when he's trying to be intellectual. Oh, I mean, to be clever. Isn't that oh, just a funny. really weird juxtaposition? Yeah, it is. Oh, it's more knowledge, I think. Yes, that's what I mean. Knowledge. But clever, funny is clever. You know, I associate the two. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, when he comes up with, we've talked about some today, you know, the little things, just he'll always get it right. And hmm. if he doesn't get it right, it'd be not bad. Right, I've got about five. Spin through them really quick. We've got a lot of ex in the community. I'm just going to do them, but slowly, if that's right. No, I'll only do. Let me just. <laughs> so, okay, I wouldn't pick Babushka. I can't pick that one. Good one. That's why we track them in to help, to help you along. That shows right how hard rock busters aren't easy to come up with. Even the bad ones. What are you going to rate this? Um, what Reese Week's no, no, rock busters uh, as? Well, it wasn't much his rock busters as rating. I'd rate that about an eight and a half, maybe. But bad. the listener one that came in, they actually read, read out. So I assume it's one of the better ones. It's rubbish. It's not like it uses T like it do you know what I mean? It uses, it's yeah. just not it's harder. It's a skill. It I just did. reminds me of those awful novelty mugs that you see in offices. It's like Lionel Rich tea. There's no, always there's a not. mug in, in in an office cupboard there is with yeah. Lionel Richie's face on. And it always annoys me. Right. Okay. This is I'm just gonna end on this one. I'll forget the rest. But I don't know if I should put it in. But I love it. Go and on. It's not the words, but I want to win a fluffy toy. I, I want to win their fluffy toy. A lot of people like that quote. That's not. I thought it's that's fine. okay. You can say that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not actually. Yeah, it's fine to do the accent. But you, in any other context, you wouldn't do that. But because we're reviewing, I don't think... it's like we get special because you wouldn't do that in a, a crowd. You wouldn't shout that. <laughs> yeah. Not with but your voice. Just, Definitely don't, not. Don't you love it? I do. Don't know. He's oh. very good at that. I want to win that particular toy. I could say that all day. And it actually, it's good for my voice because we which is going. But I want to win a fluffy toy. Can you do the whole show, the whole rest of the show? And that 
than that <laughs> mock accent. Anyway, let's um let's move on to XFM the community. This time. is part of the show where we read your feedback. So we've got we've got loads and loads of emails and tweets here that you lovely people have sent us. This album and I'm going to get longer and sort of go digress more for ten gonna... minute monologues. What's that? Did they say they want more like ten minute monologues? <laughs> I don't know if you're going to laugh. They say nine minutes. Um, well, okay. Hopefully I can alleviate some of the stress of your voice now. So this is from Levi and he's on Twitter. He, he's just joined us recently and he said, currently on episode 22, not taking your advice and listening to the XFM shows and then the pod. I'm intending to listen to all your pods and then I'll go back to the XFM shows. Really enjoying them, like sitting with a couple of mates having a drink, which huh. I am actually having a drink. So thank you, Levi, and cheers. <laughs> Johnny Walker. No, but it's funny because I asked that question yeah. today. And it, I never, like the the listeners never said, and I didn't know that email was coming. No. That's weird. But uh, thank you, Levi. Thank you for joining us. When you say joining, did he join Patreon? Because you should. If you're listening. <laughs> yeah, but I well should. Or you can buy us a coffee as well on ko-fi.com. Link in the bio. Yeah. Uh, Adam Jordanson. There we go. Hello, Adam. both. I'm loving the content. I have Thank just you. stumbled across this podcast after 10 years or so listening to XFM ones. That's I perfect. am. We have that. You know, because we're 10 years, 10 year anniversary. 10 year anniversary. It's just nice, Adam. Live show coming up. I am Adam Jordanson and was shocked when I heard you read one of my YouTube comments in your podcast episode nine. Is there any lemonade where Gary mugs my name off? <laughs> <laughs> Adam Jordanson. Yeah. I mean, I can't see it, so I'm just going by what my... I also can't remember episode nine. We must have been really bad back then. Yeah, we... When we did X Feminine Community in the old days, we, we read other people's YouTube comments out. So this is a really weird thing that just by chance, he obviously, what, he obviously listens on YouTube and has yeah. now emailed in and he's discovered us. That's amazing. Yeah, because I was going to say, weird. I'll see what the videos are at and it'll be out for, let's say, 12 days and have yeah. seven viewers because people don't, we don't sort of add yeah, yeah, yeah. the YouTube side. But yeah, what was his comment? like? So part? he goes on, he says, I could argue Forrestal isn't exactly a usual name though. Loving your stuff and we'll oh, be a my, listener. So I must have said, like, his <laughs> name is rare. Or, like, <laughs> okay. Um Loving your stuff and will be a listener and follower for good. The XFM audio from Ricky, Carl and Steve is my biggest comfort and just can't get enough of them. Glad you boys think the same and love it in the same way. Well, thank you, Adam. Get a proper name, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much. That's, very, that's very kind. Very kind. It's nice to see you have, know that someone is actually on YouTube and it's not you just clicking a few times. It's I'm just glad that. that people are slowly but surely finding out about the podcast. Makes me very happy. This is from Leo Gortzag. Oh, All right. right. Uh, now, that, listen... now that I'm going to slag off straight away. <laughs> no, I'm really <laughs> not. Right now. Um, started listening to your show from the beginning a few months oh. back and have just caught up now. I can find the email in and be part of this community of sockless oh. freaks who drink milk from saucers. I was listening to your episode on the last show of Series 3 a few weeks back. Oh, yeah. Anne Frank. Anne! Hubbard was that, was... Did we do that as a live stream? Would it, or was that the one? No, we uh, no, we didn't. We don't. We don't tend to no, review well, shows we, on the live we, ones. That's the reason because uh, that Hubbard... argument afterwards. But <laughs> <laughs> and realised I was precisely one day old when that episode originally aired. Yeah, assuming yeah. the dates on Spotify are correct, mental no. to think that I'm laughing my head off to words that were said when I was kicking and screaming infant, probably still in the hospital. Almost poetic in a way. What was my destiny? Am I imagining things, or do I remember you guys saying you had an interview with Warwick Davids uh, lined up, and is it still yeah. happening? Anyway, just thought I'd introduce a bit now right, I've caught up and can start actively listening to your stuff when it comes out. Really good to have this community when it's rare to find other people who are into the shows. Keep it up, and I'm excited for Series 1 coverage, as I reckon it's one of the best. So thank you, Leo. So nice to have you with us. A lot of people have said how much they're looking forward to us uh, tackle Series 1. Yeah, More than I was uh, expecting, to be honest. Yeah, um, people wanted it. Some people wanted us to start there, but we thought, you know, it's 2 is more well-known. I think we did a poll, did we, on Twitter? And Series 2 won quite, by quite a lot. But Yeah, I'm pleased we started really with Series 2. One. They, they really like Series 1. Yeah. But I think it's, nice, it's kind of nicer when there's you're not right at the beginning when they don't like i know what you mean a bit of background but we so will some... go back and do it in 
four weeks. My throat doesn't... I know, I can hear. So to answer your question, Leo, uh, I think Warwick Davis <laughs> might just be off the cards, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. I've tried so many times to get in touch with him, but after some initial interest, uh, he has kind of uh, teetered off. Uh, yeah. We were both very excited at the time, but I'm afraid it's just the way these things go. Like We, we do have lots of interesting guests lined up uh, a few of whom I am Do we? Uh, I've got a few names in mind and people that I'm yet to reach out to but some people I am talking to right now <laughs> so do stay do stay with us and don't go to other Australian podcasts because that would really break my heart no you can't I should not be drinking wine but no uh, <laughs> I can hear. Uh, no but would you like could you tease us with by not saying a name so we don't give them it but you like what are they how could sure. you sure there was obviously Ian Morris <laughs> Oh, well, trying, trying to talk to you for ages. I'm also uh, talking to the chap who did the music. He's a composer, musician for a lot of Steve's work, and he did all the music for Idiot Abroad. He's called Vic Sharma. And oh. then there's a few. Um, there was the director of the Ricky Gervais show on HBO, who I'm talking to. These are all speculative names. I don't want anyone to get too uh, excited. And these are not. Um, you know, but because um, you know, we do our best to find top guests, but we're sort of limited because it's such a small pool of people to sort of fish from, I suppose. Well, I mean, that's a, a brilliant um, tease. I think it's pretty good. Oh, it was I mean, really, it really. And I want to say, Mars does great on the guest, and sometimes he doesn't tell me. <laughs> it's like, and I'm just being, <laughs> being no. Well, uh, this next one's but from here. But no, no, I just, mm. he's very, very good because you know that sort of a bit. I forget you do that until you mate you, it's good you're like how you do the edits he does could have been a producer on there. He doesn't have a throat. um this is from kira hi miles and gary it has taken me a hi, lot kira. of time to start from the beginning to the most recent podcast you have posted it's i must loop. say the progress has been amazing and yeah, to hear the change oh. has been great oh that's uh, i love that. you interrupted me right no, in the middle that, of that oh, oh no oh, i'm so sorry read it again um, it, that's I love that comment because it's saying a lot about the beginning <laughs> as well as current. Um, current. I only discovered you from the RSK convention that I've been eyeing up going and thankful my partner brought me tickets for it and I'm hyped. I started listening to RSK radio on XFM when I discovered it on Spotify a few months ago oh. and I got hooked and constantly listened to repeated episodes that just made me laugh. I also started doing Carl's Rockbusters on my family whilst we were away on holiday in mm. Abadovi, and we came up with a few. Where's Abadovi? I think it's Wales. Go on, okay. What's the Rockbusters? Okay, here we go. So number one, you can't have no tea, but you can have some chocolate. B M. Uh, Barry Manilow. <laughs> oh, I, I, just, I only use the initials there, not the. Yeah, blue. I can tell. Am I allowed tea? As in the drink tea, or is this tea like dinner? Tea is in the drink. I'll give you that. A bit aggressive there. Sorry. Cho it, mm, chocolate. Is it something to do with? Um, what could the M be? Can't use Jim Cadbury. M M M M M M. What's yeah, chocolate MB. begin with them? Yeah, What's chocolate begin with them? Just... What's the chocolate begin with them? It, is it a band or a person? It's a person. It's a solo artist. There are people screaming at their podcast devices. Is it okay? Is it a modern one that you know? Yes, I might it's a modern. With? It's a modern artist it's from the last ten years. No, it's a man. I feel like we're not even playing rockbusters anymore. We're playing. No, 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 no. It's, well, it's actually quite funny. Um, that's the best bit. Uh, I, I'm usually very good at. This. Okay, so it's <laughs> Bruno. Me. It's Bruno Mars. So Bru. That's no. Good. Mars. Yeah, I, that's Get it? I did. That Bru, is no, Mars. Um, number two. Into four clues, you know, I could make Oasis work, work if I tried hard enough. The number two, mm. that food I really want and it's looking at me, but I know it's not good for me. TT, this is a proper Carl's mum. I'm sorry, Kira, but it is. Clue. So if you would. If you don't get this. No, I'm sorry, but TT, is it a band? Yes. It must be Take That. But how is it? Know, no, why? That? Oh, okay. Well, I thought, that yeah. food I really want, and it's looking at me, but I know it's not good for me. Uh, fat? No. There's it's... no F. No, no. TT. I uh, is it the old? Temptations? Oh, you... oh no! You explain that to me. The Kira. Temptations. It looks good, right? But you can't have it. It's tempting me. Right. Third one. Be... Yeah. Why do you oh. keep arguing with that guy? I don't know. You tell me, Kira. Um, that, the that, initials yeah, are, 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 are FOB. 
uh, and you can get that just from the initials, I'm sure. Although maybe you can't, because this is more my sort of music. Mm. He's leaning back, ladies and gentlemen. He's thinking. It's, it's a band, I know. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it's like a round helicopter band. It, did <laughs> it was Fallout <laughs> Boy. I'll save you the pain. Oh, Fallout, yeah. I... Um, for guest suggestions, how about some local comedians that maybe look up Ricky's comedy or local writers that are inspired by Stephen? I am an actor slash comedian age 23 from crew cheshire and i did a stand-up gig with tiny tim and one with clinton baptiste from phoenix oh, nights i love it he's brilliant <laughs> i just had to attach the clinton photo because he's just majestic and there's a great photo of them two together he also yeah. has a podcast on spotify and i'm sure he would be happy to guest for you guys if you were interested well this is a long-winded way of saying love your podcast the ricky anders one was top tier can't wait to see you guys at the rsk convention okay we can't wait to see you and it'll be really nice to hang out with people and i'm just about having a drink with people because because uh, i love drinking i love boozing <laughs> no, but, uh, explain to me i don't understand how she would discover us through because we haven't done what no no she where she are we on, to... where are we on the internet where it says rsk i'm not i'm not chris I because we're really... because we're posted we they know that we're performing there that's good if people are like literally seeing that just our name they know and then they're searching us yeah Probably it's lot, good. Lot it's marketing, mate. That's the way it works. I didn't think anyone would. But uh, you've got a bit of competition here for the comedy. No, Kira, that's amazing. 23, you know, it's so, you know, it's it's, a, it's, it's fantastic. You obviously, I'd imagine you're getting paid, which, you know, anything, you know, 23, that's, that's great. And Clinton Baptiste. Tell me, is Clinton Baptiste as good as he is in Phoenix Nights? Because I kind of like, he can't be that good. He's very funny on Twitter. I, I, yeah, he is funny on Twitter. He spends his whole life in as Clinton Baptiste. He's always on memo, like, or any of those. He'll always be the first one. I might yeah. get you one in January. Oh, great. I can't wait. Okay, well, that's <laughs> Um, right. Okay, that's a so sort of dynamic. No, but Kara, <laughs> thanks very much. It's, it's uh, yeah, lovely. Come and see us. And Back. our last uh, email of the day is from Ewan Watson. And Ewan says, all right, you little slugs with no personality. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, love the podcast. and I've been listening since the start of the pandemic. And I'm already starting to re-listen to your shows in the same cyclical fashion as I've done with the XFM shows for about 10 years. A couple mm -hmm. of funny little fellas talking about absolute see you later what's see not to like was scrolling uh youtube the other day and a video entitled rare xfm excerpts pops up in my recommended section naturally i cool thought dust. it was going to be yeah is it because there is a youtube so channel. these are yeah exactly the so same, these man. are the the 20 minutes of footage that was circulating oh, online and people on reddit were getting very very excited it was it know. was part of an episode it wasn't it was well like, no ah. it was it was loads and loads of different clips taken from the start and ends of particular links there's a real funny bit where carl slagging off um liverpudlians then another funny bit where there's actually more to the um pork chop story why did they get cut out it's i don't understand so it? a couple of things i don't know why they got cut out and b i don't know how this audio was recovered but yeah, it's it amazing well, that it so exists and um i just yeah. wonder because it's like you know i'd like to listen to that but you also said there was one episode where there was a 20 or so minute block this is it totally cut out yeah but it, I, was, I thought it was one this is it one, yeah but... so uh he goes on and uh, naturally i thought it was going to be either the series zero clips that not many people would come across as an actress said to a bishop <laughs> or maybe even that, the enemy put that in he put that in <laughs> or maybe even the uh, enemy test broadcast uh, or the radio two specials both yeah. of which i think are shite by the way too much mm. shouting and content regurgitation although i would add you know I, I actually quite like the start to both of those i like the radio two more than the enemy stuff but the, the start know. of the enemy stuff is very very funny anyway I started to listen and lo and behold, it was, as far as I can tell, genuine excerpts of the RSK XFM episodes we know and love. Mm. The parts I'd never heard before. It's about 23 minutes long and it's really worth a listen. And I'll put a link to that part in the description so you guys can check it out. But definitely do make sure you get it in your collections because it's well worth a listen. If, could you put that link in the screen? I have to put it in there for you, love. You can see that. It does seem to be mostly small links that have been cut out of the already well-known recordings from late Series 1. 
1 early series 2 and not the fabled lost series 1 tapes but still new content is new content if you already have heard these before and i'm late to the party then i'll retreat in shame and you'll never hear from me again if you haven't and i have somehow discovered some unknown content then i can't wait for my dedicated xfm in the community episode and surely some crap in the jiffy bag as a reward keep up keep up the doodling you bilsh all the um, best you and p.s it's definitely old cold as it holds the cold, right, not it, old it cold like as the antiquated form. Oh, wait, I don't know. It's so, you know, it's so good. Well, I conceded. Thank you, Ewan. It's very kind of you. I, I, I don't know how you listen to us in sync because we don't, we don't do, how do you, how would he do that? Because we haven't done a show for about eight weeks. I'm not criticising him, I just... It's nice, you know. Like, like, how is that the thing that you take away from that email? Uh, oh, well, I can't... Yeah. Thank but, you, Ewan. Yeah, really just, great, uh, great, brilliant. great to have you with us. And I loved listening to all all 23 of those minutes. I, I mean, I just, it is like the holy grail, isn't it, of um of an XFM listener's life when you yeah. find new stuff. It's just the, you know, the possibility that more stuff exists. And you're like, oh, you, that's brilliant. You said today there was a couple of, it was just this word, turtle shell. Or yeah. And I like, that's a new bit, you know, we sort of discover them in the shows. But yes, thank you, Ewan. I like your style. That's Gary. a nice set of emails. That, uh, yeah, they were nice. Oh, yeah, good it. mix, no. good mix. And if you want to get in touch with us, Roughly. do so at spinnerspodcast Roughly. at gmail.com or spinnerspodcast on Twitter if you've got any kind of feedback, theory, question, and we will do our best to uh, tackle it uh, until Gary's cut voice out. <laughs> cuts out. Um, uh, Gary, I want to wrap things up because I okay. am bloody bored of now, talking what to I you. Say, he, this, this time he means it. <laughs> like, yeah, it does it as a joke. Yeah. Uh, I'm, and I'm, I'm going to enjoy this edit, I can tell. It's no, I don't know. <laughs> um, look, I think we should we put a couple done. of songs. We haven't done it in a while, but I think we should put a couple of songs into our Detroit Spinners library. Well, we, we did it. We're, it's Mars' idea. It's a good idea. And then someone said, that's shit. Right, so we stopped. But then we stopped and someone said, why have you stopped? I'm not. Well, like, I, I, I the like only, look, I don't want to make this a regular thing, but when there is a cause, then there special, is a cause. There is a reason. But I will, because this, this week, um, the lads talk about uh, Kate Bush. Oh, and geez. Kate Bush was also in the news recently because she celebrated a very significant birthday last... There's been some brilliant like footage. If you stay up late on BBC Two on Saturday nights, they play some great archive um, recordings from different artists. And last week it was Kate Bush, who was for her birthday. So there was loads of cool documentaries entries archive performances no. on um top of the pops too but the reason i'm putting in kate bush is obviously they talk about them but also yes. her, one of her songs was popularized in the new latest series of stranger things so i'm gonna put in homage to her I'm going to put running, running Up The Hill into our library because I'm a big fan of Kate Bush actually I have never seen so much publicity and so, so, yeah. so much news and tweets for, it's good for you know Kate Bush it's amazing but also her music's so relevant sorry and what, what, she's what, just I, an interesting comment I don't because she's what, just because her m music and her poetry of her performance to the the level of emotion she's able to portray in her music yeah. so and original the i mean the high notes she hit i don't you know i don't know how you can do that i don't know if you can yeah. do it now but but so many of kate bush's hey, music are like i love um you know this woman's work and there's she does a song called um dream of sheep as well and that's, oh, yeah, that's yeah. one of my favorite songs is, and is that uh taken from a 2001 a space odyssey like the no. it is is it, it is, actually yeah it's all my little film thing. You better not be right because I know my films. Yeah. Do you want to put? Oh no, that's some. That's a Philip K. Dick book. I know, but I'm just, it was. So... <laughs> uh, so what? What are movie. you going to put in a song? Well, you don't, don't have to, by the way. Well, I'm just thinking of a song. Let me think. I will think of one. But I've done. I always do ones I've done before, and I forget. No. Have I done an really. Oasis before? <laughs> <laughs> I don't People want to just put in one day, like get do just do the everything or so. Do you want one day? Like, we'll we'll put in one day. Stereotypical, you know. No, that's the okay, movie, actually, because I could have chosen a more original song, but um, there we go. Oh, uh, right. Anyway, two pedestrian songs for two pedestrian podcasts. He's podcasters. angry with me, and, and I say he, he's got he's right to be <laughs> in a way, but so, <laughs> anyway, Gary, a lot of what you... you just heard uh, was cut. 
It's like we, we would have heard of that an hour more. No, it's good, man. It's good to it's do good. um yeah, it's good to do regular shows again. So do get in touch it's with good. us all in ways. Next week we're gonna be doing a live show. What should we do it on? What do you mean? What's sure. the episode gonna be about? Oh well, no no I've got I've got I know I, this is a suggestion I was gonna make to five minutes oh. ago until you really like you're like you know not which I was by then but that twenty odd minutes right why yeah. don't we review that that's like let's do that it's like, it's like good it's like, idea because it's new and is it new you've heard it it is, is it new? new no I do you I know what I love that idea so tune in we're gonna review new content. <laughs> And we'll do some questions. I might do a little quiz and maybe we'll do some rock busters and stuff. I probably won't. But who knows? You, <laughs> you won't. But you can join you can... in the chat and yeah, you know, exactly. It's good exactly. So do you make sure you continue to like, rate, support, subscribe, review five stars would be brilliant because we like that. Uh, do do check us out on Patreon and uh, give us a little donation on Kofi if you got a little bit of pocket money spare and you fancy helping out a couple of people and to hey guys yeah, at least half of us will be in edinburgh next week so yeah. i will definitely be there gary yeah. uh, his position still needs to be filled so if you want if you want that that spot that uh anticipated spot for 500 quid do get in Sunday. touch uh, <laughs> this has gone out uh, oh and oh and uh, so yeah if you if you are based in edinburgh do do hook us up because i could be either with company or incredibly lonely so no, I'd love no, to have no. a little drink with, with any listeners that are around and maybe go to watch some comedy and stuff. Should be yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, it'd be great. It'd be what we would have done. Like, would he sleep <laughs> in the room? I, I don't, I don't Do want, want to put you in a position where you have to, you know, like, a stranger is sharing a conversation. It's three room. nights. It's not five nights. We're going to be in Edinburgh from the 9th to the 12th of August for the Fringe Festival. Yes. We're going to go and see Matt Ford. Matt Ford, Rosie, Rosie Holt. Oh. We're going to go and see Rosie Holt. Oh, the yeah, the she's absolutely brilliant on Twitter. Yeah. I, I would, I would, Who else are we seeing? Let's check. The Japanese one, and we didn't book it. Japanese fella. Um, uh, well, you kind of the thing if you've not been to it. Oh, oh, like, you just wander around and you kind of everyone's come in and the promoters of the show they're really nice. You know they'll sit with you and then you know we don't go to the shows but. You can, you can just sort of not book anything and still have a good time. It's just a, it's just like all the good things in life. Yeah. Drink, friends, socialising, good don't food, pop. comedy, don't and just being outside in the sunshine. It's just everything that you want. And it's yeah. all day, every day. It's we, fantastic. We, we had absolutely no sunshine. And the, the biggest storm I've ever <laughs> been in. And it, and Inside. It <laughs> so we've done all happening this year. Um, I know, no, it's bad. It's good. You just want, you know, wander around and sort of everyone's in, you know, they're in a good mood and you can start drinking at 12 and not like be the only ones, like everyone's. Sort of oh, up. drinking at 12. I can't wait. Anyway, can guys, so, uh, I don't think I will no. smoke actually because I have, I'm in recovery mode, so I don't think I can handle it. You've got to call it a day, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I'm always encouraging time. doing it. I was just, you know, oh, I can you know, tell. Right? Like, I, <laughs> I would if we were together. But we're saying, <laughs> so, you know, that's a cliffhanger. Will we go to Edinburgh? We Tune in next week to if, find out. <laughs> I don't want to get the train and I'll fly. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. I wish we could go. That's more of a comment to you. Let's end the show. I know. All right. Well, <laughs> see you later, guys. Bye. Thanks for listening. <laughs>